30 teams became eight. Eight teams became four, but there's one more to go. We had a lot to talk about. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Talking Baseball. Thank you for tuning in. If you've been listening throughout this postseason every day, we've been doing a show recapping the games that happened and the games that will occur today. It's been a lot of fun. I think this is our most amount to talk about. Only two games were played, but we got a lot to dig into here. My name's John Boy. I'm coming to you from New Jersey. We got my co host, Jake, out in Denver. Two crazy games last night, <clears throat> but first, let me tell you the, the patrons, the sponsors of this episode, because there's a good amount of crazy nice people. Number one, Michael Nielsen. Mike is my nickname for him. I hope no one has that already. Mitchell Bollinger. Balls. Bollinger. Bollinger. How would you say it? Do you go bowls? Bowls, yeah. Sounds sound like balls. Yeah, bowls. <clears throat> the Riz. I don't know the what Riz, his yep. I don't know what his nickname could be. Lucas Perea. Yeah, that's a tough one. We're not getting that right. Mr. Rose. You think that's Justin? Oh, uh, it's Pete. Thanks for tuning in, Pete. Thanks, Pete. Chris. But you're Gr- banned, dude. Oh, now he's banned. Damn. Like, come on. <laughs> Chris Griswold. Griswold. Scott Titmus. Yeah, every day. <laughs> Mitchell Mogren. Time out. Michael. Michael. Michael, Ma- Michael Mogren. <laughs> Mogren. Connor Armstrong. We do, have two, we do have two Michaels and a Mitchell, so you're you're off the hook for that. And a mister. <laughs> yep. <laughs> David Kudlowitz. Yeah. Those are our most recent Patreons. Did you get Connor Armstrong? Connor Armstrong. How could I forget? Yeah. Neil's Who are those great, people? Uh, well, Connor Armstrong is Neil's great, great nephew. Very cool. Who's not that into space and hates talking about it. No. So get over I, it. Uh, no. It he, yes, I am related. No, I don't care. That's his answer every time. Well, those are our most patron, recent Patreon supporters. Patreon.com slash John Boy Media. Get you there. Get you access to the live show we got. Looks like Ryan Buck Johnson's in here. He's in the chat watching live with us. He's excited because the Nats won. Jake, how are you doing on this fine Thursday morning? I'm good, James. I'm good. Uh, I'll be a little slutty for a second. I uh, Leave some reviews. If there's a day baseball people are listening, uh, the reviews kind of unfortunately matter. We normally don't ask. Leave a review and be like, Jake is the playoff Kershaw of podcasting or something along those lines. Um, insane, man. Insane. I was, uh, I mean, the Braves Nats game, it does have a ton of talking points baseball wise. It bummed me out for a little bit. And then I was bummed out kind of halfway through the Dodgers game. Cause it was just like, it was nothing. I mean, the first inning happened and then it was just, a lot of nothing is this the Strasburg bunting at bat like just twisted a an NL knife in my back a little bit um and then we get i mean lifelong highlights <laughs> lifelong highlights for a lot of guys that was uh that was insane yeah <clears throat> i i i think looking back when you're when you were in the first game and it was 13 nothing and 13 to 1 whatever in the first couple innings 10 nothing after the first it was like this game sucks like i i put it on the back burner yeah i actually didn't watch the last inning i fell asleep took a nap but uh now looking back on it it's kind of like we got a wild one <laughs> because it was yeah i mean uh, it te- technically it's crazy <laughs> um after that first inning, um, I mean, it turned into a social experiment. It was te- teams have never done this before. Fans have never done this before. Like, what's going to happen? Um, it kind of sucked for baseball, um, and then it totally redeemed itself at the nightcap. 
totally redeemed herself. And I was really tired, and I was watching uh, movies with Katie, and then I had the game on my laptop. Mm. And uh, I was trying to, like, make gifts or whatever, and I was just watching, and I was like, holy shit, what's going on? And I, I got more mad at Dave Roberts than happy with, with the Nats. And that's unfair yeah. to the Nats, because they deserve a ton of credit. And I know that on this episode, I want to talk about how terrible Dave Roberts was, and I'm not trying to take away from the Nationals because they deserve the win. They fought. They come back. All that. It was really good. Howie Kendrick's great story. But uh, I, in the moment, I was more like, what the fuck are you doing? Then, holy shit, go Nats. You know, I was just confused. So we'll save yeah. that for a little bit because I know, I know we're a chronological podcast. People have been saying that nonstop. We're a cron pod. We're a chronic podcast. Chronic podcast, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Wow. Might make that into a sticker. Just the chronic podcast. That kush. Nope. Do they just go in chronological chronological order? Oh. You may think this means one thing, Mom, but it just means they go in chronological order. Just in order. Yeah. That's so how we operate. Back off on my chronic podcast sticker on my laptop, Mom. Seriously. That's a baseball podcast where they go in chronological order. And yes, yeah, someone hit a skunk <laughs> on the road outside the, the apartment, so. Yeah. I'm not high. All right. Let's burn it, Jake. I can burn it. Burn game one. That chronic. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to do this. Here we go. On your mark. Get set. Go and burn. St. Louis versus Atlanta. Blues versus Thrashers. Nelly versus Ludacris. Game five between the Redbirds and the Braves in the ATL. Mike Fultonevich on the mound, and Fultonevich is Algonquin for that ain't it, Chief. A leadoff walk by Fowler. Colton Wong, sack bunt. Runner on second, one out. Maybe they push one across here in the first. Goldie, infield single. Ozuna, RBI single. The Gold Glover, Freddie Freeman, boots a potential Yachty double play ball. Carpenter, RBI walk. Oh, boy. De Young, intentional walk. Fulty's out. Max Freed in. And it was more like the spelling, Max Fried. RBI walk for, oh, yeah, I haven't even mentioned him yet. Starting pitcher, Jack Flaherty. Fowler's back up. Him and Wong back to back. RBI doubles. Goldie lines out. Okay, okay. Ozuna. Strikes out to end the, oh my God, it gets away from McCann, another run scores. Molina grounds out, it's a 10 spot in the first, that's it. Flaherty was solid, the Braves died, a number that will haunt Atlanta forever, 13 to one final. Haunt them forever. Brutal, just slapped in the face, left and right. Um, and like, it was a team effort. That's why I'm going to make a, a long breakdown of the first inning of just like everything that went wrong. It wasn't just bad pitching. It was, it was a team effort. Drop third strikes twice. Um, error by, by Freeman. Freeman, gold Glover. Walking in runs, walking in the pitcher. Like it was, it was everyone's fault. It's just, but you know who gets the most blame? Who gets the most blame? Oh, Mark, I know, Mark Melanson. You playing it? Looks like you're playing it. Let me bring it up. Let me okay. bring it up because um, I I've got a weird question for you that I kind I kind of want to get out of the way. Do you think there's anything to like city sports teams? Like, do you feel like St. Louis has a little good juju because the Blues won the? The hockey championship, do you think Atlanta has a little bad juju? I mean, you could go back to the Falcons. You could go back to their... I mean, the Braves haven't done anything for a while. Do you think there's anything to that? Um, okay. Well, analytic people will hate this because it's about human emotion and feelings. I do right. think there's a, a quality of when another team in your city wins and you're sitting there watching it and seeing those fans and the parade 
I think you get a bit more hungry, like or or just like it's tangible, like oh shit, like that's what it feels like to win here. Let's how fucking sweet would it be if we doubled down? Tiny, tiny bit of energy, I think. Maybe just a little bit more hunger. On the Atlanta side, no, I don't think so. Okay. I think it could also make your crowds just more energetic because they're just coming off highs nonstop. Yeah. They're like, hey, we were energetic for the blues. Like, let's bring the noise for the cards. Like, let's go. The city of magic. We're all in. And you get fans that aren't baseball fans but they just like getting swept up in a moment they just got swept up for the blues they're like okay i'm in again what are we watching this time so it might make the stadium a little more rockets because it's been happening i don't think you can really say it affects the play on the field yeah it's it's interesting because i i think there's something there but there's definitely no way to quantify it and it's not significant but like there's something (laughs) but i don't know what it is all right, here's, my, here's my Lanson's pump-up speech. It's the most awkward, weirdest thing you'll ever hear. Hold on. Pulling it up, turning the volume on. Big day today, guys. We need your energy. Game 5 NLDS. Let's do this. The energy. Let's go. Let's do this. We need your energy. We need to feel that relentless energy. Get going, let's go, game five. Here we go, finish it up. Boom. I mean, that that third one. Big day today, guys. Energy. This oh, one? That relentless energy. Get going, let's go, game five. Here we go, finish it up. Boom. Relentless energy. Let's go, here we go, game five, finish it off. Hey, I don't like I don't like how much you've watched that clip because you had the timing down perfectly. I, I, when I, you were lip I tweet. I, no, I tweeted out those words. So I, I knew exactly what was, <laughs> I was reading. It. Um, um, the yeah, the we Braves about? made I, I know we're doing a lot of non quantifiable stuff to start, but uh, the Braves made two fatal moves before the game even started. A Mark Melanson releasing whatever that was and B they got rid of. The the foam chops, the foam axes, which, yes, there's a whole conversation out there if it's appropriate and blah, 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 but they had them for the first two games. To pull them back in game five, uh, yeah. you lost. You lost before you started, and then you didn't start. Then you did start, and it got even worse. That whole situation's weird, and it's tricky, and... Not really what I want to talk about on here, but uh, yeah, we'll say I saw some people saying that the opposing pitcher, what's his name? He's part Cherokee. He, he, Was it Hensley? Something like that. He's part Cherokee. He speaks like Cherokee language still. He was raised on a reservation. I believe. I believe all that. I read it yesterday. He didn't go out of his way to say he didn't like the chop. He didn't even tell them to stop. Reporters asked him. I saw oh, a lot yeah. of people giving this guy shit. And I just think if you're listening to this show and giving him shit, like tone it down. He was asked, what do you think about the chop? And he said, well, I don't really like it because some people may think Cherokee people, that's all they do is they just make noises and wave their arm when they were pretty smart and like, you know, a civilized culture. So I don't really like that. That's the one thing that we're, you know, showcasing. Right. And he was asked a question, and he answered honestly. The Braves didn't have to stop it because of his answer. Yeah. Especially well, in the middle I mean, the of the series. Thing, the whole reason the media asked that is because it is such a hot topic that when that ball gets rolling, it gets going. But that's uh, that's for an off-season episode when we'll, we'll rename the Cleveland team and the Atlanta team. But for now, um, are you a believer in... We, we've talked about game path a lot, or I have, and I keep forgetting the actual word it is. But McCann squeezes one of those foul tips. The whole game takes a different course, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, man. It's like, you know, we were saying you were trying to find a name for it, like thin ice games. We're like, you have to be perfect. We kept saying it. We said it about the Brewers against the Nationals. We said it against the Rays against the Astros in an elimination game. I didn't think that this was a thin ice game, but they fell and cracked the ice McCann drops that strike three the bat extends that and then that error by Freeman 
And then, I mean, like, I don't know what you want to call the McCann pass ball and the strikeout. That's like your frozen body got unthawed just to die again. Yeah. That's yeah. fucking so brutal. Yeah, for for me, the... um. Because even the Freeman, Freeman boots a ball and you say, I mean, that's like a total whoa moment. Like, okay, this is a do or die game. Freddie Freeman, who's like the heart and soul of that franchise, uh, such a good defender. He boots one and that's you're like, you take a step back and you're like, okay, so this is insane. This is basically the worst the first inning could have gone. But I think there's still like a, hey, let's strap in and we can still do something special. When you walk in the pitch, when you walk in a run to the pitcher in the first inning, that's the game was completely lost. Yeah. There was a lot of moments, man. That's why I'm going to make a breakdown and just be like the saddest inning of all time. And I mean, if you're a Braves fan, you're just killing yourself. You. I know Melanson's a freaking weirdo, but, you know, you were in extra innings of game four and you didn't use him. He's technically your closer. Um, that ball goes off Freeman's glove in game four. <laughs> Tough series for Freeman in hindsight. Um, and, yeah, I know a lot of people were tweeting out the stats that, uh, um, I mean, all a lot of the hitting was Albies and Acuna, which, I mean, adds up to a degree, but Donaldson and Freeman kind of weren't there. Marcakis also had a really tough series. Um I mean, great for the Cardinals, man. Every, every time we rule them out, they just take it a step further. Did you like their, their speech at the end? The coach's speech? I did. I did. Um, our, our Rosania, or I'm, I'm, I, I forget his actual last name, but that's a, that's a tough look for you, dude. <laughs> you're, right now you're kind of a quadruple-A guy. You can't be videotaping coach's speech in the locker room. Yeah, for anyone that... For anyone that didn't hear it yet, he was like on Periscope in the celebration. I think it's like, you know, the closed door celebration. Yeah. But I'm about this series is we played the game hard, we played the game right. We started some shit, we finished the shit. Yeah. Let's go. And that's how we roll. We don't start, but no one fucks with us ever. Ever. All right. Now, I don't give a fuck who we play. We're going to fuck them up. We're going to take it right to them the whole fucking way. We're going to kick their fucking ass. Yeah. Let's go! Yeah. I, I love the opening line. They started some shit. We finished some shit. That's a gr- that's awesome line. Strong. At the end, he loses me completely because he it just seems like he's like trying too hard to just fit fuck into every sentence. Yeah, he got lost in the F-bomb there a little <laughs> yeah. bit for sure. Um, I feel like... That, and. You know, you've, you've been breaking down. We're kicking your fucking down. ass. <laughs> it's, it's, you've, like, you've my, been breaking it's like when my eight-year-old cousin learned how to, s- to swear, and he just walked, I'm going to kick your fucking ass. <laughs> Strong. Um, a, I know you've been calling Mike Schilt like kind of the Dwight Schrute-looking manager. A, the fact he's got any of this in him is good. Well, I th- he looks like Dwight Schrute. He doesn't manage or act like Dwight Schrute. Gabe right. Kapler doesn't look like Dwight Schrute. He manages and acts or he did, like Dwight Schrute. Yeah, <laughs> Gabe Kapler fired. They need to the switch top. their bodies to match their personalities. Because like, Gabe Kapler's always like, oh, how could you not review this? Like, he's just like taken yeah. back by the world. Grow up, Gabe. Why are you so full and of I, muscles if you're such a pansy? I think it's it's also funny. I mean, it starts getting crazy. We, we ignore... You know, analytics is becoming more popular and obviously all the on field, but personalities are a huge thing. I mean, you just you talk about Mike Schilt's speech. Did you see Dave Martinez's winning speech? That no. was pretty No, I was it was asleep. It, it was like quiet, it was kinda awkward. Um and and maybe again, like like you're saying, this was the behind closed doors. Maybe when they closed the doors to the media, Dave Martinez gave a strong powerful speech but when the cameras were there it's pretty awkward and timid and it's like oh <laughs> like you guys rally around this dude um but that's that's another thing for another time i mean what what else is in this game i mean is the um is the pitching an actual conversation like uh, what did you what were your thoughts on the whole jack flaherty situation i would have taken him out yeah like, would you let him still? How, what would you have done? I would have. 
I would have allowed him two or three innings to solidify, you know, because sometimes they can slap you right back and you're like, oh, shit, this is just one of those games where both sides are going to put up numbers for whatever reason. Yeah. So I think you need him in the first and then in the second short, maybe one time through the order. Whatever, I don't know the numbers on it, whatever adds up to a throw day. Okay. Once you pass throw day, which I'm guessing is 30 pitches, once you pass that, I mean, you could use them for game two, guys. Yeah. You just wasted them. when, Dude, and then I know we were texting about this personally. When the Cardinals hit Acuna, I feel bad for Acuna because, like, He's going to have a bad rap for a while. He gets hit a lot. And I think he's going to stay getting hit a lot. And he's getting this tough situation that Manny Machado's in where they play the villain. And then sometimes they act like they like playing the villain. But then they play the victim when the villain gets attacked. And it's like, well, that's what villains do. They get attacked. So you can't. You can't play both sides. And I feel bad for him because he's really young and hasn't really figured out if he's the villain or the hero yet. And that that is I think that is a really important note because I, I think you're right in the Machado comparison almost like actually made my eyes open. That he does have time to change that. I mean he's still twenty two and he can do a lot. Uh but right now, yeah, he's he's gonna be the young guy villain. I mean, Machado, when he was really young, like the Donaldson tag play and throwing the bat at the third baseman, it was like Machado's come down from that nonsense a lot. Yeah. And when you hear him in interviews and podcasts, he's like a nice, normal dude. And I think he I think he got his fill of the villain last postseason. I think he may yeah. try to come off that a little bit. And uh, I don't know. Hopefully Acuna does it does it a little quicker because he's a great talent and I don't want his reputation to be there's that punk and I I want to correct myself really quick Ronnie's still 21 (laughs) um so he he can do so much but yeah man I had you know we we deal with some of the crazies of the internet I had a couple people that genuinely reached out and were like dude I think this series on Acuna and it's like no it's not someone else told me that I was like no it's not but that's that's the rep. It's the Machado. It's like Manny when when Manny still had a bad rep before he came like silly winning Manny um, in Boston. Like you you just kind of get this reputation and it's hard to shake. There's a couple the casual fans see you not run out a ball you thought you hit for a homer, um, and then it just starts to like steamroll. So um, yeah, but that's that's yeah. tough. I, I mean, I he's not Ronnie the reason they it. lost or anything bad about on field. I, no. At all, obviously, that you'd be crazy if you think that, I think. He was one of the better performing bats. But I just think personally, for his reputation and moving forward, be the villain, you're going to get thrown at a lot, or be the fun-loving player. There's a fine line, and he's kind of dancing all over it right now. But he's young, and that's kind of how it goes when you're young, and it sucks to be 21 and on a national stage, but you're also very gifted, so that's what happens. Anyway, my point was, bringing up that hit-by-pitch, sending Flaherty up the next inning with a bat in his hand is so stupid. I cannot believe they did that. There's no reason for Flaherty to still be in that game. You guys just hit Acuna. If they want to retaliate, oh, my God, they can retaliate and they can hurt your star pitcher. There is no benefit of that at bat now i know the braves didn't throw at him and it was just a one two three strikeout and half good for the braves half i don't know man you should have i would have buzzed him at least like but i hate that i think that to be honest with you guys because i if i heard someone like you whenever i hear someone you gotta throw at him i'm like dude shut up that's not you never have to throw at someone but i was like yeah buzz him you texted me that and you were like uncomfortable about it and you were right. Um, so the, the things here is a kudos to Sean Newcomb. He was the dude on the mound. He was the dude in power there. He could have made things ugly really quick. Um, 
The last thing baseball needed was a brawl in the 13-1 to <laughs> Game 5 deciding game. Um, that being said, Newcomb walks away looking good. For the Braves, it would have it would have just been an awful look. If you're down 13-1 to and you start throwing at people, um, they kind of I'd say they walk away the bigger man. No, no Braves f- fan really cares about that today. Um, but if Newcomb did throw at him, I think baseball purists would have been like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're yeah, making um, ads up. But, yeah, like but even though there's, they, even there's though enough they body of evidence. Even though they didn't, I still think it's crazy they sent Flaherty up there. There was no need. Yeah, and that, that was my thing, too. I think because at first I almost jumped on team don't pitch Flaherty at all. Um, and then, you know, I, I – you, you start putting more logic to it, and they're like, well, he already did his full routine, like he'd been throwing. So I was kind of on the same team with you. Throw him two or three, get some bullets out of him, have him ready for game two. And, dude, it actually lined up perfectly. If I remember correctly, I want to say he pitches the third inning, um, and he goes out there, and it's his third at bat already, um, by the way. Uh, and there's runners, runners on the pond – and like, okay, if you send a pinch hitter there and you put up another knock, it's like 15. Not that the score mattered. <laughs> it was already decided. But you could go to your bullpen and get through this and have him ready. I mean, it's going to be an interesting story going into the next series. Um, there was kind of the fun moment that if this if this was a Cardinals podcast, you love that after the fifth inning they were going to pull him. And then Flaherty comes in and he goes, no, no, coach, I got one more. And, uh, you know, it's the pitcher, and he's a young guy, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Yachty follows him, and he, he tells him. He's like, no, he does have one more. He's good. <laughs> so that that was kind of cool. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, 13 to 1, 10 runs in the first, one in the second, two in the third. Cruise control the rest of the way. They had more runs than hits. I mean, every Cardinal batter scored a run in the first inning. Yeah, we had. Def- defensive replacements in the first inning. Uh, Harrison ba- Harry Bader comes in for Carpenter. That's that's one of the more hilarious <laughs> stat lines you can look back at. Dude, I um, didn't I didn't realize that. Yeah, they did defensive replacements in the first inning. Carpenter, you did you did your job, buddy. Um, so yeah, and I uh, Cardinals fans. Dude, they, uh, there was a moment I was trying to make the breakdown. I made the breakdown of McCann. And there's a moment where Carpenter's having a conversation with um, some Cardinals, not the, not the manager, but someone. And I was like, what are they saying? I was trying to figure out what they were saying, and it was definitely about that. Because it looks like Carpenter's like, I'm out, and he leaves. So I want to go back now with that context and see if I can figure out what the lip reading. Because I think Carpenter was just like, I'm, I'm done then? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, fine with it, but like, all right, whatever. Uh, and yeah, I think for 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 Cardinals fans, uh, again, like awesome, congrats, you guys absolutely blitzed them. Um, if you think if this has been too Braves uh, centric for you, well, it's the last time we're going to talk about the Braves, and we're going to talk about you guys more coming up. But uh, good on them, man. Uh, they they did it, kind of slash a, <laughs> a Braves collapse. Nelly wins. McCann retires after the game. Yeah, I like McCann. Mark Teixeira's yeah. stepbrother. Their parents are married. Oh, I've got a uh I I've, I've got a Jakey hot take. Um you know, one one of the one of our crazy fans record this and get it ready. I've got a free agent who's going to sign with St. Louis or with Atlanta this off season. Austin Romine. No. Maybe. That would Who? suck if you just randomly guessed and you got it right, and now my guy doesn't. Okay. Sorry about it. No, it's a great job by you, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just took the sale right out of here. <laughs> oh, I don't even think he's a free agent anymore. You ruined it. I was going to say <laughs> is, he, he maybe he gets traded there this offseason. It's my new hot take. Tommy Pham. That's who they need. Is Tommy Pham a free agent? I thought he was. Then I just looked at his page, and it says he's not. But I thought that was the whole reason. Wasn't he with them already? 
He was with St. Louis. I said the Braves need. Him. Oh, okay, okay. Because whoever they whoever they bring in house this off season needs to be like no nonsense. I don't give a damn about that thirteen to one game. Let's go. Um, so yeah, basically the whole thing is ruined, and now Austin Romine's a Braves. Congrats, Austin. Did you? Oh, so okay, little buffer combo. Sure. Says you brought up Tommy Pham. Did you hear his interview after the game with the Rays? Yes. Uh, if anyone didn't hear it, I mean, I could try and pull it up. They ask him, like, you know, what's the it's question? Intense. What's that? It's intense. It's awesome, though. Like, and and yeah. it's and it's weird. Be, it it's weird because if someone was to write these down, like these quotes down, I think you could read it and be like, that's. That's like conceited or shitty. Here it is. You know, but um, you know, I I'm proud of myself to be honest with you. I remember throwing a ball against the wall, playing catch with myself, throwing a ball up, hitting it. You know, throwing batting practice to myself. You know what I mean? I believed in myself from a young age. You know, it ain't like I had a dad out there to to um play catch with me or, or throw me batting practice. So you know, I'm proud of myself. There's a. I mean. If you were to just take that out of context, and I'm sure some fucker did, and just say, like, Tommy Fan, I'm proud of myself. It sounds like a Reggie Jackson, like, quote from back in the day that would have went crazy. But, I mean, that's that's cool to hear an athlete actually give themselves credit. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. actually, I worked really, really fucking hard to get to where I am, and it's because of my hard work that I am. A lot of people helped me along the way, but I'm proud of myself. It's uh, yeah. it's probably the most real answer that you never. I, I think I think Tommy Pham is so intense that a lot of people did not take it out of context because they didn't want to deal with his wrath because he's a he's kind of a bad dude and yeah that's uh that's I I think whoever comes into the Braves this off season they need a little bit of that uh like that attitude like I don't care we're I'm doing I got to this point I don't care what happened in that game five last year let's go yeah. I mean, Tommy Pham has a crazy story if you haven't heard it. He was, uh, there was one time he was injured, Jake. He injured himself and they asked him, like, how the pain level was. And he was like, uh, no, I was like, I, 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 I've been stabbed before. So, you know. Yeah. And I think it's a really sad story. I think, like, his stepdad stabbed him. So go look into Tommy Pham's story. But I just All thought right. that was an interesting quote that you never hear. I'm proud of myself. Yeah. And it was delivered in a, in a, not a cocky way. Just a, no, just a and I, good job by MLB um, and like ESPN and some of the outlets because they they were sharing that quote and in a good light. Yeah, I'm sure some asshole tried to make it sound bad. It's always one man. Yeah, you got one. No. Oh shit. Yeah. So. All right, you got to burn for the uh, Dodgers game. I do. Anything else we need to say about cards, Braves? Braves, good run. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, you guys have all the talent. I think this offseason is plug and play with some mean dudes that won't care about this loss. And Cardinals, can't keep the crazy train rolling. I think you need, like, Donaldson types, like a couple more that are good. Yeah, the Donaldson conversation is going to be interesting because young, thick Austin Riley, he's most comfortable at third base, so it's how ready is he and how do they want to allocate their money. But, yeah, Braves offseason talk is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, here we go. Cardinals, Nats, game five. Dodgers. On your mark, get set, burn. The best playoff starting pitcher of all time, asterisk, Steven Strasburg versus Walker Moxie Bueller in an elimination game at Chavez Ravine. Bottom one, Max Muncie. Burn, burn, that funky Muncie. Two-run <laughs> yacker for Max. Those two runs were more than Strasburg had given up in his previous 28 postseason innings coming into this game. Bottom two, Kiki, do you love me? Are you riding solo dolo for Hernandez? It's 3 nothing Dodgers after two. The pitchers would exchange zeros until the bottom of the sixth. Soto hits an RBI scoring one run. 3-1 Dodgers. Who's coming in out of that pen? It's three times Cy Young. 
five-time ERA champ, one-time MVP, Clayton Kershaw. He mows down Eaton and then comes back out for the eighth, and oh no. Tony Meatballs Rendon crushes a decent pitch from Kershaw, whatever. It's still 3-2, oh my heavens, he might be the sickest man in the world. The very next pitch, Juan goes so high, so far, so toe, 450 feet, the bomb off the legend, creating his own legend. We're locked up at threes, free baseball. We're into the 10th, the Joker, Joe Kelly for LA, Howie Kendrick, faces Huck, and let me put a smile on that face. Grand slam for Howie. He was having a brutal defensive series. He comes through with the swing that sends the Nats to the NLDS and ends the faux dynasty. Washington, seven, Dodgers, three. This game was wild. I have a, I have a buddy who... I like to call him a Mets fan version of the Dodgers. This team sucks all all season. They're never yep. going to do anything. If they pitch Kershaw in a big spot, if they give Bellinger and Seager big at-bats, they're going to fucking lose. And I was like, man, you're crazy angry. Like, Come on, they're pretty good. And <laughs> those three guys don't have good playoffs. Um, and... Uh, yeah, the uh, Dodgers dynasty is weird. It's a really sad dynasty to look at now. And this is a sad end. And for the Nats, it's awesome. But this game was so mismanaged, it's unreal. I think yeah. Dave Roberts' brain froze. The Joe Kelly stuff, I can't explain at all. Oh, um, it's 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 maddening. Joe I, Kelly I in his first inning, clean inning, right? Looked great. Right. Threw all curveballs. Fantastic. To throw him out for the next inning, fine. You know? Fine. But, Jake, like, they have relievers. Other relievers. Urias, May, Kenley. Uh, they have other relievers. Joe Kelly hadn't pitched two innings since August 24th because he's yeah. been battling an injury. So, I mean, so you got Joe Kelly back out there, and I'm fine throwing him back out there if you're going to go batter by batter because you have so many other weapons in the bullpen right. who that's why you have them there, right? So in the 10th, when he walks Adam Eaton, right? okay, Kelly, let's go to one of our other weapons, but they don't. Then Anthony Rendon hits a ground rule double on a line drive, Hard hit, and they go, okay, Cole, Kelly, you're staying in. We're not going to have you pitch to Juan Soto. We're going to intentionally walk him. When you have Kolarek in the pen, who's been your Juan Soto guy. Yeah. Why intentionally walk Juan Soto? Bring in Kolarek and just see. What's the worst case? Like, he pops you? <laughs> you're yeah. loading the bases with no outs. Bring in Kolarek. And then, now base is loaded, leave Joe Kelly in. It makes so little sense. And not backtracking. In the moment, a, a ton of people were saying this. It was, it's maddening. Like, I think his brain froze. I mean, he had, he had the arms available. Arias has been good. Dustin May's last outing was solid. Ken Lee, I mean, that's... That's your guy you kind of want to, if, if the ship's going down, <laughs> um, that's that might be the guy that would be symbolically and the guy you'd want out there going down with the ship. Joe Kelly. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's no excuse. Ken Lee comes in after him, looks solid. Maeda 
had one of the most impressive innings of the postseason. Um, it, it's it's devastating, and I I I ended up sounding pretty good about this game yesterday because I was you know mockingly saying the end of the faux dynasty. But it was funny <laughs> you asked about Dave Roberts, and I, the best way I could put it was when was when's when have you ever been like Dave Roberts and gave a round of applause or been like good job Dave Roberts. No, and I mean, maybe it's part of the curse of this team being so stacked, and the playoffs are a crapshoot. They, they truly are. This is what we were trying to put into words to Yankees fans without sounding soft, but when, when the Yankees advanced to the ALCS, we told Yankees fans on Talking Yanks, they're like, hey, I know this doesn't sound like the Yankee way, but like, appreciate this, because yeah. this, this sport doesn't work this way. And then the Dodgers a couple days later, are the perfect example. Um, it, it takes a lot of skill, but it also takes a lot of luck. Last year's World Series MVP was Steve Pierce, um, and the ALCS was Jackie Bradley Jr. Uh, you need a lot of things to go right, um, and you need your manager to not stick to their gun when their gun is Joe Kelly. Um, well, I even think the Kershaw move is kind of baffling, too. Fine with him ending the inning there, but to throw him back out when you have all these other arms, if you strip the name, he wouldn't yeah. be out there. He's throwing his fastball and his slider at the same exact speed. Yeah. They're both 80-plus miles per hour. Like, go watch the pitches that he gave up for home runs to Soto and Rendon and tell me what they were. Yeah. They're just slightly moving 89 mile per hour pitches and uh when you have all those weapons and at that point they had uh how do you say his name maeda maeda maeda, maeda. they had maeda Look, behind him but yeah I, or who looks and so you have good. and you have Kolarak for soto well now it's yeah. a three two game i don't i don't get anything that roberts does did there and this is now three years in a row where they're so good in the regular season and all the puzzle pieces are there. Like, they've built yeah. a World Series team, and they just got, like, a guy with, like, pins and needles hands trying to piece the puzzle together, like, just slamming them around, sliding around, not knowing what's going on. And, I mean, it, and it's where baseball can be disgusting because, well, A, <laughs> think about what happened to the Braves yesterday. <laughs> baseball can be disgusting in a lot of ways. I mean, they, they ran into the Red Sox last year who were kind of on a war path, and, and they just got beat. Um, they lose the Game 7 in 2017. Um, and, I mean, just like that, I mean, you know, Dave Roberts goes to from good manager to almost <laughs> like a laughing stock. And, yeah, the, the Kershaw thing, he owned Eaton, which, hey, good for you, Clayton. Um, yeah, man, it's brutal. Kolarek had been so good against Soto. Um, you have to – you can't, Dave Roberts was still trying to play the game inning for inning when the, the game was batter per batter. Um, and I don't know. ESPN, again, I'm, I'm giving them some love today because guess what? When they cover baseball, they still have the resources to show some pretty cool shit. Um, Clayton Kershaw, 34,374 regular season pitches, lifetime. Never given up home runs on back-to-back -back pitches. He's done it twice in the, in the postseason. Post <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. That's so. fucking insane. And then, Jim, I thought this one is actually – because that one's a little fluky because who cares? Like, if you bounce a curve in between giving up homers, you still gave up back-to-back -back homers. I don't really care. Yeah. Um, worst ERA when facing elimination. And this is actually I, – I don't know if you've seen this going around, but this is wild. So, number one, worst ERA when facing elimination. Uh, 39 pitchers career have 20 innings pitched. So facing elimination, 20, 20 innings pitch. Worst is Tim Wakefield, 6.75 ERA. Tough break, Tim. Second is Clayton Well, he Kershaw. didn't record an out, right, in 03? Yeah. So that's an infinity. Like, that's tough. Yeah. And, I mean, he's like, he's the knuckleballer that would come out when you need innings. <laughs> so that's, that is what it is. Um, Clayton Kershaw, number two, 5.77. Roger Clemens, number three, 5.28. Pedro Martinez, number four, five one seven. 
Max Scherzer, number five, five oh six. Uh, I, that's kind of a cool list. <laughs> like, I don't think so it's damning the, to be on that list. Wakefield's the only oddball there. So that's why it's interesting, Jim, is the fact that your best managers pitcher, get managers get away from what they normally do because of the name, like you just said. Um, and that's how you find yourself in a playoff situation having a bad time. Uh, because that list outside of Tim Wakefield is like a who's who of star elite pitchers. Um, but in these games, managers go out of their way to try to work them in, and that's how they run into problems. Um, and I, I, Clayton Kershaw, man. I mean, what's when he's sitting down having breakfast today, what's he thinking? Did you hear his sad quotes? Yes. <laughs> Everything they say about the postseason is correct right now. It's like, oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Brutal. He's not wrong. No, he's not wrong. No. Dodgers need to make big changes. Like, Dave Roberts should be gone. Four, you just, 48 hours is it, on the clock. If you go into next season with Dave Roberts and yeah. you go to the postseason and you lose because of some weird managing again, it's on you at that point. Yeah. It's on you. Management, it's on you. If you make a change, right, and you go to a new manager and you go to the postseason and you lose in some bad way again, it's like, well, nothing. At least we tried something different. Same result. Let's find another. You know what I mean? But if you stay with yeah. Dave Roberts, it's fully on you. You can't do it. You, you, you need to mix it up. I don't care how good he is in the regular season. You can't put yourself in the situation where you look like fucking fools next postseason if the same thing happens yeah. four times you, again. You need definition the change of pace. Definition of insanity. Yeah, you, you need the change of pace. And, um, you know, I had a couple people that were like, dude, this isn't the end of the Dodgers. Like, they're still good. And it's like, yes, the Dodgers are still going to be really good. They have a ton of talent. Um, but the Dodgers can never be, like, favorites again until they do it yeah they're like a rod and and you know in the postseason or whatever like until you do it you will be counted out yeah you just can't you and that's how the that's how the nats were until to yesterday you know yeah in in, in uh, elimination games the nationals a kudos to um kudos to strasburg for settling down um you know you give up the two-run homer instantly, and then Kike sneaks, like, just gets it over the fence on you. That's brutal. Um, when they brought in Tanner Rainey, I was like, we're really doing this? Um, and, hey, big claps for Patrick Corbin. Um, Patrick Corbin comes in. He goes 1.1, three strikeouts after the blowout game. He was in a, he was in a terrible position because when the Nats tied it up, they send him back out there. He potentially could have been the losing pitcher in all three games if they scored a runoff of him. Um, and Patrick Corbin shoved, and they've only got two dudes in the bullpen they believe in, Hudson and Doolittle, and they've been doing the job so far, more or less. Um, so, I mean, big credit to the Nats, and dude, Soto's special. Soto is so special. Yeah. What I wanted to say before we move on is – the Dodgers signed A.J. Pollock for big money. They gave him, what, like four years, 80? Four years, 50 or 60 or something like that? Yeah, 460, 570, something like that. I can get there. He goes 0 for 13, Jake. Yeah. In five games. Didn't get a hit. That's tough. Bellinger had a 549 OPS. Um, which actually is like middle of the road for this Dodgers team. And that's the, kind of the problem because Will Smith did nothing. Corey Seager did nothing. Turner, Peterson, and Muncie are the people that actually did something for the Dodgers. And then the other thing is so you had Pollock, right? Well, they also got this guy, Joe Kelly. And the reason they got him is because last postseason, 
He shut them down in the World Series. He made three appearances, I think 3.2 innings pitch or something like that. Zero earned runs. Was a big reason they lost the World Series in 2018. And they sign him. And uh, he loses the playoffs for him. And they signed yeah. him for what, three years, 20 or 30 mil or something like that? Something like that. Sim- similar to what Britain, Adovino, those guys got. Yeah. So, just sucks that that guy's cost you two playoffs in a row. Yeah. Yeah, and you gotta you you gotta shuffle it a little bit. It's gonna be really interesting to see because they have more young guys coming up. Gavin Lux, Will Smith, uh, Beatty, Verdugo. Um, they they've got a lot of dudes. They um they they need to shake it up. I uh, maybe one big trade, free agent here and there, but uh, and the new manager. Yeah, I think it's a must. I someone was asking me because I was saying there's eight managers now that Ka- Kapler got fired. There's eight managerial spots open, maybe nine with the Dodgers, and someone was like, he's got two years on his contract level. You really think the Dodgers are going to let him walk? And I was like, they I think – couldn't the, care less. I think the bold move is to stick with Roberts. Yeah. That's the gutsy move. You think your guy Joe Madden's interested in this gig? Yeah. He probably looked good in Dodger blue too. He looks good in everything he wears. Good looking. No, guy. picture him in a pirate uniform. Good looking guy, man. No, picture him. Picture him pirate. Are you doing it? Yeah, he'd wear a pirate hat. <laughs> he fucking would. And that's obvious. They he'd might sh- move that. He'd show up the- for his first day of team meeting in a pirate hat and like a parrot on his shoulder. I'm Peg like, leg. You guys ready sure. to have fun this season? It's like get the fuck out of here, Joe. They would bring in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Have that ship right past their end zone, they would put one of those in Pittsburgh. So now I'm rooting for Joe Madden to Pittsburgh. Every Wednesday's Penguin Day. Every Thursday's Magician Day. On Friday, we wear matching outfits. And on Saturdays, we talk pirates. Hey, pirates, you got a little talk this episode. Good for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's move on. Hey, before we do, <laughs> Howie Kendrick having a brutal series. Oh, and then you just hit the series winning Grand Slam. That's baseball. Like, I I had a weird moment this morning where, like, if I have a son and he doesn't hate me, like, I'm going to, when he's 12 and getting frustrated with baseball, I'm going to be like, hey, watch Howie Kendrick in this series be basically miserable and then an absolute hero. The X Factor. Howie. All right, moving on. We've got another elimination game coming. Game five. Rays at Houston. Garrett Cole versus Glass now and the pen of all pens. Every clinching game has been won by the road team. Yankees celebrated in Minnesota. Cardinals celebrated in Atlanta. Nationals celebrated in Los Angeles. Will the Rays be celebrating in Houston? Jake, what's your answer? I'm too biased as a Rays fan, man. <laughs> um, Jake, oh, Jakey uh, Rays. I'm uh, I'm too deep in this, dude. I I don't know. It's it's funny. People love predictions and stuff. And again, like I. Yesterday, you could go back on the tape. I said some stuff that sounds cool about the Nats. I also said I'm kind of endeared to the baby Braves. Um, anything can happen in the sport, so prediction is a little stupid. Um, the pressure is clearly on Houston. Um, they have the trump card of all trump cards and Garrett Cole. But, Jimmy, how about that list I just read you of star Basically, the worst pitchers in elimination games are the best pitchers because they get the most leash, and the most leash doesn't necessarily pay off in playoff games. I, well, I also think, like, to get the ball in Game 7, 
only good pitchers get that. Right. So that list is going to be only good pitchers. And Tim Wakefield. I love Tim to Wakefield. To a degree. So and just... Tim, uh, Tim Wakefield will fight you like hell on that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if, if you're Houston, you're at home, you're playing the home the home field advantage card, you're playing Garrett Cole, um, who I think in his last 17 starts, they're 17-0, and 0, something along those lines. Um, so oh, Houston yeah, still has amazing. Houston still has a lot going for them, and they are the favorites in this game. Um, the pressure is on them, and it might be, uh, and I guess this is what I'll be looking for in this game to get a lean, is the who makes the first bad play, who pulls the first baseman off, who who boots a ball in the outfield and they get a they get an extra base on it. Because for Tampa, you're the full underdogs. You're telling yourself, you know, we got to be perfect. We'll play our best games. We can beat these guys. If you're Tampa, you boot a ball. That crowd gets loud. You're the Rays. Garrett Cole's on the mound. It starts spinning downward fast. For Houston, if you boot a ball or whatever happens and the Rays get the early lead, now you're facing the team with the lowest payroll in baseball who could potentially be coming back on you from down 0-2 in the series. I mean, you're in a bad place. So I'm watching for the first. Who's got the first hiccup? I don't care about the first solo homer. If Altuve gets Glasnow in the first, I wouldn't be shocked at all. Um, If Choi gets Garrett Cole, I'll be a little shocked. I'll be honest. But I'm I'm looking for the first mess up because then that team is on the thinnest of ice. Garrett Cole struck out 15 rays You're... earlier in this series. <laughs> 15. Tommy Fan had a single against him, though. Then a 1 2 3 inning. Then a 1 2 3 inning. Then a 1 2 3 inning. Then Darno had a single. Then a 1 2 3 inning. Then a 1 2 3 inning. Then Kiermaier had a double. And Adamus walked, and they took him out. But. It's going to be tough, man. Watch out for Fam. He's been the Rays' biggest bat. Seven hits in four games. Home run. Um, one run scored. Two RBIs. He's got a 440, four on base percentage. But Willie Adamas, Jake, in 10 at bats, so less at bats, he's got a 615 on base percentage this series. 615. Willie, Willie went nuts the past couple games. I think this is going to be a close game. Uh, because the first game is a close baseball game with a dropped ball in in uh, second yeah. base. Second game is a really close game, three one with like the tying run at the plate in the ninth, right? Really, I close think they game. they had the leading run on, up at one point, yeah. And in the trop, it's blowout, and then game four, not a blowout, four to one, but the Rays dominated from start to finish in the field and with the pitching. Now they're going back to Houston. Houston hasn't blown this team out yet on their own doing. Their biggest win was a four-run win, and they got gifted two runs on a dropped pop-up. So I either think – I think it's going to be a close game. You would hope the Astros just – the Astros haven't haven't dominated a game yet. Is that fair to say or is that unfair? No, that I, I think that's fair. You're right. I mean, the pop-up probably makes that first game a 4-2 game, and we, we look at it a little differently. And, I mean, even 6-2, it's not it's not a domination. Um, although, I mean, what Verlander and Cole did in those games. But if you're the Rays, you're doing everything you can to get to that bullpen. I mean, I think Garrett Cole's going to have about 115 bullets for you. Um, so you, you just got just to gotta constantly put together good at-bats. You can't. You can't go down – if you go down 0-2, you cannot swing at that slider in the dirt. You're done. Um, you have to put good to, good at-bats together. And, Jim, I just think – and maybe it's a little shock from what we've seen yesterday, but I don't think – the only thing that would be surprising would be if Tampa won this game in a blowout. Every other result would make sense. You could see Houston having a big game and being like, oh, yep. you guys thought we, you, yeah. you guys thought we were done? Here we are. 
You could see Tampa winning tight. You could see Houston winning tight. You could see either one of these pitching slash pitchers dominate and be like, yeah, that makes sense. The the Rays threw seven guys and they struck out. They struck out 17 hitters of their own. Like yeah. this this game can easily go in a number of different ways. Um, it's just it it feels like it's gonna be that playoff mentality where I mean you saw it last night with the Nationals like yeah Bueller was shoving they had some action on the bases but they knew whoever was coming out of that pen was not Walker Bueller and if we get action on the bases you have to turn into hungry dogs and it's time to eat like you're only the Rays might get two opportunities to score runs in this game and they need at least one of them. <laughs> Astros better be rocking. It better be loud. Um, I don't know. I'm excited for it. And that's we we I did the Atlanta St. Louis fan base thing. That was kind of a weird question. Nelly versus Ludacris. Nelly versus Ludacris. I'm Houston's taking Nelly. Paul Wall. Paul Wall. The the mouth of the South. Um, Who's Houston, that famous if, Tampa rapper? Florida. Ta- oh my God. Um, oh oh. I'm at the strip club. Yeah, oh, Steinbrenner Field. Why don't the Rays play here? They would sell it out, but the Steinbrenners own it. Sound like a John LaJoy song. That was John LaJoy, the famous Tampa rapper. He'd actually probably love being called the Tampa <laughs> rapper. Uh, Jimmy, again, it kind of goes back into the mentality of this game. Houston, what they've been planning this season, and they're like a historically good team, did some air quotes over here. Um, but there's a lot of stats behind that. If they go down to Tampa, one nothing, two nothing early, I don't think that crowd's gonna be loud. That's that's a proud city that might be on the verge of something not very proud. Did you hear the speaking of fans, did you hear I don't know who was announcing the Dodgers game? Did you hear them laugh at Dodgers fans at one point? Um, I'm trying to think. It was, was a tie Ernie... game. Was there Ernie Johnson on TBS? I think it might have been. It's a tie game. I don't know who's doing it. Tie game. Dodgers fans are intense. 0-2 count, and the batter fouled it back. The Nats batter fouled the 0-2 pitch, and the crowd cheers. And Ernie Johnson can't stop himself from chuckling. He's like, they're really on edge. They're Cheering over foul balls now. <laughs> and, like, it's an 0-2 pitch. So, like, it, yeah. it was kind of like Ernie couldn't even help himself but laugh at the fans. Tough. It's tough. Tough break from Ern. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, Astros fans got to be loud. I think they will. Unless they put up a five spot. I mean, uh, that's not going to happen. Even, I don't have the rate. You can – Hot take me. I don't have the Rays blowing out the Astros. If they can't. That's, that's the only one that would be like, what the fuck is baseball anymore? But no way. Yeah. I mean, I can see the Astros doing it, and I can see it being a close game. I just can't see the Rays doing it in Houston. So that's all I really got. I mean, oh, unless Glass now is overhyped. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see Glasno. Um, I know this is uh, something something you're into. Altuve is the one that that got Glasno. Um, so he's the guy to watch. And again, before that, Al, or before that Altuve homer in the fifth. I mean, Glasno was clean through four, looking pretty good himself. Um, it's going to be in, what what to watch for is how much leash are any Rays pitchers going to have. It's going to be the opposite of Dave Roberts. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I have uh, something to do before we end the show. As Yankee fans, we can give Talking Baseball our perspective of who we want to play as Yankee fans sure. and which guy I, – I think this is a fun question for either fan base. Which guy I, I don't want to have to root against? Which guy I don't want to have to root against. Okay, you go first so I can follow. Okay. I Like you just said, Jose Altuve. I love watching Jose Altuve yeah. play. I love how he can <clears throat> pull high fastballs. 
I love watching his little legs run around. Like I really enjoy watching Jose Altuve play. If the Astros win this game, it's Yankees versus Astros. It sucks that I'm going to have to be like rooting for him to just be awful. Right. So do you have a guy on either team? I mean, there's there's obviously the Altuve um, little guy thing. No, I mean, it, it's... It's a lot of the Astros. I mean, like you said, when Verlander's special, it's one of the coolest thing in sports to watch. <laughs> if he's doing his eight innings, 12 strikeouts against the Yankees, that's not fun for me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. G-Man it's, it's Choi of, is another. I like G-Man, but I'm okay with the Yankees pitchers mowing him down. Um, no problem with that. Um, Astros, yeah, I mean, like, George Springer's a CT dude. I, I weirdly root for that because I'm a pathetic loser. Altuve, short. I like that. Verlander, special. I enjoy that. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I saw this circling around the Internet pretty hard yesterday, and the answer is the Yankees are rooting for Tampa. Um, it's, 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 it's not a debate IMO unless, unless you feel otherwise. Oh, no, I'd rather play the Rays than Astros. Yeah, I mean – you know, we're we're doing the home field advantage thing, which clearly isn't as as important as we're depicting. But Yankees would get home field. There's I mean, less that's the travel. biggest thing. Uh, you get more home games straight up. You get more yeah. home games. Yankee Stadium is in part of the arsenal for Yankees. Like yeah. home games help. Ask the Twins how they felt. They're crying their little eyes out because someone said something mean to them. Uh, and then, like down in Tampa, the Rays may sell that place out there's gonna be a lot of yankee fans there and they don't have cole and they don't have verlander and the yankees have dealt with openers before and they've dealt with tampa a lot have a winning record yeah. against tampa in 19 games and the time zone and the travel yeah less travel less travel and yeah, I mean they they've played Tampa a lot this year. They did pretty well against them. I, were they twelve and seven, something like that? Um, I mean, it would Tampa would totally be peskier and more annoying because it's like a new pitcher every inning and something like that. But don't if you're one of the people out there saying no, I want the Astros, man. They haven't looked good. I mean, we you know their rotation's a little messed up. I, no, it don't get me wrong. It'd be it it'd be slightly cooler to say you took down the Astros on the way if you do end up winning it at all, but you don't uh, who cares want the about Astros. Who cares about? That? I saw some people saying that too, like, uh, what path is more impressive if afterwards? And it's like, oh, oh, buddy, buddy, no one cares about that. Uh, I think people care a little more than you think. Okay, tell me the tell me the the most impressive path in history of a World Series winner. Oh, you're asking someone with a bad brain. That's that's. I don't think any. Fight. I don't think anyone could be like you know who had an impressive path. Oh no, but people the love saying when you have blah. People people love having saying you have a weak path. That's everyone comes at the Patriots for that. That's uh that's a big thing in sports. Yeah, uh, I don't think anyone cares. You win the World Cavaliers. Series. You win the World Series. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think that's all we got, right? I think that's it. That's all. Well, thank you guys for joining us. We got one more game tonight, and we'll be back tomorrow to recap it. And then, I think that's it is a very short episode tomorrow. Hold on. What NL else? NLCS, babe. Well, but that happened Saturday, so we're going to preview the... I thought the NLCS <clears throat> game one was Friday night. You're correct. You're correct. Back to the <laughs> outro music. All right. Cool. Cool party. Oh, this is a, mu a much easier path for us now. One game a night, basically, except yeah. some. All right. Thank you, guys. See you later. <laughs>